on the right, they're they're a little a little shy for today. 172 exams behind, only doing 77. But I can tell you that's because they have I think four people in the OR right now doing doing cases. Oh, so they there's probably a lot of inpatients that haven't got caught up yet. Uh, that's a good possibility. Yep. Okay. And is this just for the university hospital, or is it multiple? So this is for the main hospital, uh, this ADI, uh, it's currently called the South Clinic, or South Campus. They're, I don't know, six, eight blocks south of us. Okay. Uh, and this OPCR down here, it's an outpatient center, it's attached to us, it's, um, uh, it's another building, but it's all on the same campus. Okay. Now, Gary, how does this display for the leads or the technologists in the areas? Can they just pull it up on a web page like this? They can. And it's so you can just save it as a favorite. Looks like to me. That, that's exactly right. They can save it as a favorite and bring it up. Um, so this is just the, the daily one. This was used. Uh, it's, it's used a little bit mainly by me just to see where we are, but. Um, most people don't really use it for flexing anymore. We're, we're so busy. We don't have, we used to use it for flexing. Right. And we could say, you know, like on today, we, you know, like, oh, well, maybe we need to start flexing people in diagnostics. Like, well, I know what's going on. And like I said, they've got four people in the OR right mm -hmm. now. They've got a vascular case. They've got a neurology case and they've got, uh, I think two ortho cases going on. Wow. So they're with those four people that, that could equal if there's, you know, two to three hours a piece, that's, that's several shifts just already gone. <laughs> yep, that's a lot of productivity right there. Right. So, they have something separate for that. Uh, so Gary, let, 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 Gary, let me ask you about, um, does it, does it account for case mixes like that? Or is it just a one for one at the moment? At the moment, it's just a one for one. Okay. Um, there is some exception for that. Um, uh, down here for CT, uh, and it was for historical reference only. Uh, we started this years ago, um, and then when they combined the CPT codes for chest, abdomen, and, pel or for yep. abdomen and pelvis, then we weighted those exams as a two, yes. I believe, back then. Uh, and now with our current EMR, we have combined procedure codes like a, a CT and a chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Uh, we weight that as a three, so, so that would have a, a weighting of three on this graph. Okay. So uh, it, it's one patient, one, one, one scanning event, but it's three body parts. Nice. Uh, and we have a separate table just for that, that has the weighting in it. Is that, or is that, is that set up as a favorites? Uh, what's that? Or I mean, it's, is it in a table form that's live like this, or is it something you have to run for uh, retrospective data? Uh, so in the, yeah, so in the table, it, it, it would be live here. So uh, whenever it does its calculation of, so if they did a chest, abdomen, and pelvis today, uh, right now, this number would jump by three up to a 40, 44. Okay. Um, and then these are uh, show historical stuff. And so when I click on it, it can show me what they're like for the week. Wow. Holy so cow. This area is a little shy for the whole week here. Uh, and then I look at CT. CT had a good day on Monday. But overall, they're kind of behind behind budget. And these bottom, bottom sets of pie charts are for uh, how many have been read. Okay. What hasn't been read. Man, that is, so you've got technologist productivity and radiologist productivity. Uh, sort of, yeah. These uh, are other ones for list at least yeah. some form of reconciliation is, is what the radiologist one is. Uh, yeah, it just shows what, what's done. So there's still, I guess, one case from yesterday that hasn't been finished yet. Right. And there's a couple of cases here. Most likely these are interventional cases that were done in in uh, CT, you know, a drainage or a biopsy. Okay. What, um, what, e slower on reading. what EMR is it? Uh, we use Epic. Okay. Do you, what kind of packs do you guys have? Uh, 
Uh, we have Fuji Synapse Packs. Okay. And then, um, what's your, out of Epic, what's your, you know, I guess I only know what Cerner's analytics, analytical tools are. They're called uh, Discern Analytics and InfoView. What's, what is feeding this out of, out of Epic? Uh, this is a direct HL7 feed from orders like the packs would get or PowerScribe. Oh, wow. So we're getting a direct feed. Uh, so as soon as the tax gets it, this, these web pages get it. That is beautiful. Um, so if I'm hearing you right, Gary, that should be something, I mean, almost any IT, hospital IT department should be able to create. Uh, essentially, yeah. They just need to have you know some of the knowledge. So this is, like I said, it's just an HL7 feed. It goes in. We have a separate database that has all this exam information where we extract out the uh, the basic metadata, like I said, the, uh, uh, what type of procedure it is. Um, within the, the exam tables behind all this, there's actually the patient uh, PHI. Okay. You know, for, for who and what. So there's some pages I can't show you because it doesn't have PHI on it. Sure, that's fine. Um, but this is the basic exam productivity one. Okay. Like I said, if I go to today and then I, I just back arrow, it shows me yesterday. Oh, that is that is gorgeous. Okay. What you know, Gary, on this, you know, on this web page that I'm looking at, is there anything fancy about it? Are you using some? I mean, who created this table on a web page? Uh, uh, one of my staff that works for me. It's just a, it's just a basic web page um, using some some very old, um, uh, you know, web uh, web content uh, web programming. It's all in a language called PHP. And then he. he you know, we, we this, this came after several iterations of, uh, you know, right. doing things. So uh, the first the first go round when we had this, we did not have a live feed. Uh, or, or we were using a live HL7 feed like we are, well, we, like we've been using for like the last, I don't know, eight years. Right. But at first, it was just a periodic, uh, I think we had an hourly uh, dump out of our, uh, what at the time was Meditech uh, uh, RIS. So we would get an, an hourly uh export of all the studies for the day right and then we would import it and then it would populate the graphs okay so we changed that from just a from a once an hour to a live real time um you know on that php language on this on this website is that something that can be simply copied or or uh if i just cut to the chase gary is that something one of my it people if you gave the code, if you sh wanted to or could share your code with us, uh, I, it would still need a lot of modification because a lot of this stuff is very, very uh, customized for us. Uh, so, example to, to extract what's a diagnostic study versus a CT um, within those HL7 fields, there's the department code, and those go into the database, and then we know based on that code, you know what's what. So it have to be have to be tailored to um, the specifics of whatever you get out of your, your um, HL7 feed. Okay. So there's some... And the same for the procedure codes and waiting. You know, that's all from our EPIC EMR. So an EPIC, EPIC has uh, what they call IMG codes. So an IMG, you know, 101 is a chest x-ray, and IMG 203 is a, you know, CT of the abdomen, that kind of thing. Oh, basically just mapping those fields. Yeah, so we had to get it. We have to keep live real time uh, uh, up on on all those uh, fields and, changes, and we're constantly adding stuff. Oh yeah, especially every year, you know, when there's CPT code changes and or combo exams and right. So okay, and all that kind of stuff. So that it, so could the base code? Yeah, it's a need a lot of massaging and work. Yeah. Okay. 
But we've, we've adopted this now. So we were on Meditech, and then we went to our uh, standalone Epic system. And then when we became SSM, we went to the SSM corporate uh, uh, Epic system. Right, right, right. So this has been adapted now to three different um, uh, systems. I could imagine. Uh, is it possible? Yes. So. Okay. Well, Gary, I think I got enough data here and introduction to this stuff that I think I could share this with our IT team and we can go into our uh, development of it. You know, the I love the 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 barcode completed, the shaded area is in progress and the little red lines with the Arrows on top and bottom. That is the. That's where you should be at this time today. Yeah, that's actually what's supposed to be a goal. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a football field with goal where the goal lines are. Okay. <laughs> that kind of a thing. Okay. Um, I well, I got a little bit more I can show you too. That okay. You, if you want to see them. Yeah, keep trucking. Uh, let's see here. So that's on those. Um, you know, not logged in to see some of the stuff you have to log in so. that's okay that was the unit of service ones where is uh, here's our unread studies so these are studies that haven't been read yet Okay. And this too is a live real time. It's basically the same graph, but and same. It's pulling from the same database, uh, but we're looking at the exam statuses. I'm not sure what Cerner has, uh, whether it's like scheduled, arrived, begun, that kind of thing for yep. your statuses within yep. uh, Cerner. We have all those. Uh, uh, but this, that's what these are pulling on. So these are all in a status of uh, what Epi calls final. Uh, it's. They're, they're waiting to be, or not final, these are examined, and they're waiting to be read. Okay. And it's the same type of thing that the yellow is, it's, it's down here, there's a thing that anything that's 8 to 12 hours, 8 to 24 hours old is yellow, anything that's over 24 hours is red. Right. To, so, Gary, this, to me, this is like a, so this is unread studies, right now you're at the, this is after it's been, completed and you're waiting on the radiologist to read it yep so once they dictate it in power scribe and they hit sign then it will decrement it from this page okay and i could show you more detail but it would show it's phi so there's actually a drill down where you click on these areas oh so nice if I, on, if I clicked on this one that's got the red on it it would show me that there is a an irct that's waiting to be read that the doctors haven't read yet it was a procedure oh yeah and so that doctor, unfortunately, our, eye doc, our doctors rotate. So they probably did that procedure yesterday afternoon. And then he rotated to another facility, and he won't be back until next week. Okay. And that's live here. <laughs> that is really – oh, yeah, so it'll sit there till he gets back. Yeah. And this RSP, those are all IR. It's all IR. We just haven't changed the, the name that we had before. Right. And these are cardiology and vascular. Okay. Uh, That's pretty cool. That, you know, we're going through um, some challenges currently um, with a new PAX. We're, we're a year into a new PAX, and we're still trying to develop a reconciliation process and validating what was in What's in PACS is what's in our EMR and vice versa. I mean, do you have any tools for that? Uh, we do. I'm not sure, sure what I can show you that doesn't show PHI. Let me just stop sharing this for just a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take a peek at it. Okay, so in this middle, of, these are all things that tie into our packs because we can tie into our packs. We tie into packs, we tie into PowerScribe, we tie into uh, this other database that we get out of Epic. Wow. Uh, so uh, let's see. The, it, where did my cursor go? Oh, it went, changed a little bit of a tiny paintbrush. 
And then she made us make it bigger. And I loved it. So this is if, if we have any issues recorded, it tracks it here. Uh, we have our own, uh, 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 they're called PAX Corrections. It's a form that they took the check to fill out online when they need something fixed. Yep. They're like, I, I, I messed up. I need this fixed and to do whatever. Um, we sometimes have studies that get uh, this one here. Uh, how many are marked dictated, but they don't really have a dictation on them. So the the radiologists go into uh, uh, the system and actually accidentally mark something dictated, and then we go back and we change the status of the back because they really haven't said any words. We used to have a problem with the uh, with the set of residents. We're a teaching in academic teaching institution. And we would have some residents who would cherry pick and they would mark some of the difficult studies as red so that doctors, the attendings wouldn't see them. Uh huh. <laughs> and then they could go on and do the easy cases. Ah. When, yeah. So when we discovered that, we added this on here. And so, like, now they get caught the second they do it. That is really good. <laughs> uh, let's see. This next line it's studies that started. So we have stuff. Uh, we have a few of the ultrasound machines mainly where they go out and they do a study and it gets uh, they send some pictures and it gets changed to a status of started in our pants right and then it never resumes sending the rest of the study and it's like and so we'll have to you know sometimes we'll have to call them and say hey you know you know you need to turn your machine back on and and finish sending the study because they'll go out and do a portable and they're on wireless and they'll send and they'll get 